Hello everyone, just before we start, I'm recording this just after Mum and I have finished the episode and I thought I would mention a trigger warning. We discuss suicide and sexual assault, both in brief terms but nonetheless, and also gets pro- quite deep in this episode and I do a little cry. So <laughs> if you're not up for that, then uh, please listen to one of our other episodes, but for everyone else, let's get on with the show. Hello and welcome to The Real Sex Education. I'm Degree Waite and I'm joined as always by accredited sex and relationship therapist Kate Campbell. Hi Mum. Hello, Diggs. Mum, you don't sound very happy today. <laughs> it's a sad day today. <laughs> why, why is it a sad day? Oh, dear. Mum is holding up a, a wire. What, what's this for? This is my microphone. Yeah, the wire for your microphone. It's what broken. happened to it? It's broken. broken. How did that happen? Overuse. Overuse. Too many podcasts. <laughs> exactly. Plugging Far too it many in podcasts. and plugging it out. And particularly today. Today is a semi-emergency episode, isn't it? We need to talk about the new sex education guidelines in the UK, which we're going to talk about today. Mum's going to sound different. She's broken her microphone. We'll send her a new one. This is good. This is so lovely. We can now get you a new microphone. You're going to sound even better. The microphone's coming out in sympathy. It's just broken. <laughs> by the the whole it's it's done all this work on sex education for years now yeah 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 (laughs) okay well we'll get into that now so let's talk about it so essentially age limits on sex education so Mm. in primary school puberty and the key facts around menstrual cycles not to be taught before year four sex education not to be taught before year five which i believe is age nine nine and ten nine ten yeah And then in secondary school, issues regarding sexual harassment, pornography, upskirting, or the taking and sharing of intimate sexual photographs without consent, not before year seven. Explicit discussion of sexual violence, including rape and sexual assault, not before year nine. Lastly on this, schools should not teach about gender identity as it's a contentious issue that should not be presented as fact. We'll we'll, we'll get to this more in detail in part two, but let's deal with the other stuff first, the sex education Mm. stuff. So, Mum, what are your problems with this? Essentially, the, the age limits on sex education being discussed in schools in primary schools and then maybe when they talk about specific stuff like sexual violence um not to be discussed or taught before year nine what what are the problems with this well children are running into these things much earlier Mm. and in order to protect them they need to know that bad things exist that good things exist they need to know more about the whole subject in order to keep themselves safe Mm. And if they're not discussed and taught, it may be too late. I mean, children are accessing porn at a very young age. And I mean, you know, they, they're likely to go and talk to teachers about that. In some families, you know, sex isn't discussed in the home. Mm. And while people say, well, it should be, you know, it's all right for politicians to say, well, it should be. And parents should be doing that. Some parents do. Some parents mm. do and they yeah. do a great job. Some, some parents certainly do. I'm looking at one now. Yeah. <laughs> but, but some parents don't. And, yes. and feel very awkward and embarrassed about it and assume that it's happening at school. And I mean, mm. schools do talk to parents about what they're doing. Mm. And so everyone has a chance to be informed. So it is really strange that they want to shut this down when, you know, everybody else, everybody who works in the field is saying it should be starting earlier rather than later. And at the moment... Children in nurseries are getting sex education. I mean, certainly around privacy and touching people and mm. that kind of thing. And, you know, children these days don't, you know, you don't, you don't ask your ch- grandchildren to give you a kiss. You don't ask your, you, you know, you, mm. you, you tell children what you're doing and ask if it's okay when you're changing their nappy. Even if they can't answer, you get into that area of consent as early as possible. Mm. So... The very idea that we can be closing it down is just madness. Yeah, and and I think that's it. That's an important distinction to make because I think people think that this means, oh, thank goodness, they're not going to be telling kids about specific, explicit sex stuff below nine. But but sex is so much broader and so much wider than that, which is what you're Mm -hmm. saying. So you know, you can learn about consent. You can learn about, and this is the thing you're talking about with the sexual harassment stuff. You can learn about what 
is not normal. You know, touching that isn't okay, touching mm. that is non-consensual without having to talk about sex or anything too explicit too early on. And mm. and teach children, what do you do in that case? You know, mm. what, what happens when you're like, this doesn't feel great, what, what do I do? That's all part of sex education. I mean, also just to say as well, Talking about relationships, talking about same-sex couples. So, you know, you might have people in your class who have two mummies or two daddies mm. or whatever. That sort of stuff apparently is allowed to be taught now. I wonder whether this new guidance somewhat discourages that as well. You know, which is which is also really bad. Mm. It's awful. I mean, one of the things about this is if you're going to teach children that being touched by strangers isn't okay. Or even being touched by, you know, being touched intimately by anybody mm. and being touched at all, ask. You know, mm. if, if you're going to do that, you, you have to also teach them how to tell someone yes. if it goes wrong. Mm. So if you're not encouraging a dialogue and making it comfortable to talk to teachers about that sort of thing, who do you go to? Who do you go to? Exactly. Who do you go to? So let's take a step back as well and think, how did we get here? Why is this happening? And mm. back in March 2023, there was a Conservative MP named Miriam Cates. And she claimed that during sex education, British schools were teaching graphic lessons on oral sex, lessons in how to choke your partner safely, and that there are 72 genders. Cates then claimed that there were classes where age-inappropriate sexualizing and undermining of parents was going on and called for a review of all the materials in secondary schools. And of course, that's what basically we've got to then. That's what it's led us to. It's interesting, when I'm looking around on this, there's lots of comments from parents being like, stop sexualizing our kids. People are worried, parents are worried that that's what's going on in class, that their children are being taught age-inappropriate stuff, that they are being taught about oral sex in primary schools or how to choke your partner safely and even in secondary school that interestingly kate's never provided any direct sources for no. and these claims the union representing head teacher said they didn't have any evidence of this either i mean the question is mum do you think that in schools children are being sexualized and that that is what the things that they're being taught no i can't imagine any teacher who would want to teach that kind of thing for a mm. start, or any of the people that go into schools and talk about sex and relationships. I can't imagine them wanting to talk about that kind of thing. But if we stop talking to children about staying safe in mm. relationships, then I think we'll see far more children in situations where they may be choked or bad things mm. may happen to them because they're much more likely to get their information from porn or yeah. from inappropriate websites yes. because they do access the internet regardless mm. of what we mm. say. And the most ridiculous things have been said over the past few days. This was being talked about on a radio programme the other day and an MP said, oh, well, you read all sorts of things in, in the newspapers. You should take no notice of those. And in the next sentence about something else and yeah, then in the yeah. next sentence said all parents have read about 72 ways of you, yeah the you 72 know. genders thing yeah Ugh, which so, we will get to in part two yeah and I've got so, a lot to say about that so they say what suits them so don't mm, read the mm. newspapers because they're full of crap when it suits them if it's criticizing yeah, them yeah, yeah. but absolutely read non-existent newspapers and articles that don't exist we'll yeah. talk about those because yeah. it suits us and i mean that is horrific yeah. with an election coming up this is electioneering it's a way of getting scared parents to vote for them because it makes them look as if they care when actually what they're doing is so uncaring it's ridiculous well listen to this education secretary Gillian Keegan who headed up this new guidance when asked by journalists how widespread the use of inappropriate relationships and sex education resources is in school she said I don't think it's widespread I mean I don't know, because, you know, it's not something we've gone and done a particular survey of. D what does that... Mm. So what you're saying is we've, made, we've released this new guidance, but based on, on this rhetoric of mm. it's inappropriate, mm. you know, <laughs> it's sexualizing children, mm. early doors, you know, there's 72 genders being taught, but you've provided no evidence and actually when pressed on that, you go, oh, well, we haven't actually looked. We haven't done a bloody survey. Don't, we don't, know. don't, we don't, don't really don't, know don't, what don't we're know. talking we about. We don't know actually. what we're talking about. Yeah. I have really searched hard and I found, we'll talk about it maybe in the second half, but I have, I have really tried hard to find some sort of evidence because even the union for the head teachers, even they said, we have no evidence of this, but we, they don't want to discount that, that, that it could have happened 
maybe somewhere but they can't find it, it mm. that's what's so crazy about this and that is why people have come to the same conclusion as you is that this is a political football and it is just to before an election sp- mm. you know spur people up and get them get them riled up what are you suggesting then you know let's focus on the under nines in particular because let's say i'm a parent mm. i might be reading these new guidelines and thinking well this sounds all right because my poor nine-year-old shouldn't know anything about sex before the age of nine. I don't. I want them to stay as innocent as, as possible for, for ages and ages and ages. What are you suggesting sex education for nines and under should look like? I had a good look at the guidelines before the change when we knew it was coming. And I just could not see in the guidelines that exist already where there was a problem. What they're doing at the moment is lots of talking about consent, lots of talking about privacy, lots of talking about asking for things, some information before nine about periods. Yes, yes. So And you know, where babies some, come from. Well, the puberty stuff uh, and periods, they're saying, you know, no, no younger than year four. I've been speaking to some people who mm. were like, well, that wouldn't have sorted me out because no. I actually got my period in year four, maybe a bit earlier than that. So it's like, it wasn't quite helpful. No. And there's lots of other things that happen to people. I mean, getting sweaty armpits. Mm. Quite often, four and five-year-olds have already got sweaty armpits. Mm. Vaginal discharge. Mm. Um, you know, wet dreams. All getting earlier. All getting <laughs> earlier and earlier and earlier. I'm laughing because maybe I shouldn't say this, but mum is adamant that I had a wet dream at five. You did. Um, <laughs> we cuz I imagine you were you were like oh no he's wet the bed and then you're like no mm, no 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 you came you came and said I had a funny dream um right. I felt peculiar I felt weird and my willy was hard <laughs> and yeah. you is what you said <laughs> so it wasn't actually wet cuz you were too young to produce anything but you yeah. were very upset about it oh, because right. you oh, felt shit. peculiar and you, we were staying in a caravan at the time and you really? maybe that had something to do with it and you yeah. you got up in the morning and you were you were tearful oh no and you well, said it, you said but, you said oh what's happened and i said oh no it's all right it's part of growing up it's okay yeah. that's See, that's all right hey listen isn't that perfect because I felt comfortable enough to come to you and be like, yo, yeah. mum, what the hell is this? I just mm. dreamt about me and several women doing some really crazy stuff. <laughs> uh, I've, wo- <laughs> I've, woke- I've woken up. He and- didn't say that, gentle listener. <laughs> and uh, I've woken up and, you know, all sorts of things are going on downstairs. This guy is way bigger than he usually is. He's rock solid. He won't go down. I'm terrified. And you've- So I felt comfortable enough to go to you with that. And you've said in an age-appropriate way, it's all part of growing up. Don't worry about it. Come in here, have some Cheerios, and guess what? By the time you finish them, it will be gone. You know, is that what you said? Well, we I don't know about the Cheerios, but you certainly <laughs> came and had your breakfast. And, um, yeah, exactly. Knowing you, it was probably an enormous bowl of porridge. That's true. Because that's is a what very, you were like at that age. That, yeah. I remember there's a home video somewhere of me on my birthday. Second and I run birthday. That second, it's my second birthday second in this video. Second birthday. Wow, and I've just you been were showing... shorter than the um, drawers that had the knives and forks in. Yeah. Yes, and the spoons. And the spoons. Because of course, I I go downstairs. I've got a few presents in the morning. I'm I'm you ca- you can see in the video how even though it's terrible quality because it was so long ago, and you can see how delighted I am. And I just suddenly just start running off, and then everyone's like, "Where's he gone?" The camera follows me, and I'm, I'm in the kitchen. The drawer is open, like Mum says. I can't. The drawer open. I pulled no. I pulled the drawer open. Uh, you, I can't see inside. To get your inside. special spoon, you felt get, around. Yeah, to get my spoon because I yeah. and then I, I, you know, grab my and special went running spoon. Running back, and you used to go because like I, I was like, I've got to eat my porridge mm. before I open any presents. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, first things yeah. first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. can't enjoy the presents without having some porridge. Yeah, exactly. Well, there you go. I think, mm. but th- this is it. And so, what you're saying is basically, sex education for under nine should look like. Let's talk about the idea of consent. Let's talk about the idea of relationships. Let's talk about. But these things don't have to be explicit at all. But even if it is a bit explicit, I mean, lots of kids do know about periods. Lots mm, of mm. girls do, but, yeah. but but separating out girls and boys isn't necessarily helpful because it makes them giggly. What was separating them or, or keeping yeah, them together? So, so, so separating them to talk about things like this. I mean, Mm-mm. boys need to know about periods too. Yes. They need to know that people can be grumpy. And, you know, just 
little bits and pieces of stuff. If you grow up knowing that sometimes people are uncomfortable when they have a, a period, they might, you know, they might want you to be specially nice. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, but I mean, that they, they, they're not necessarily going to be doing all the things that they would normally do. Yeah. Then you're going to understand that and you're always going to be sympathetic and helpful. Mm, rather mm. than thinking, why will my friend not come swimming with me today? Or mm. whatever it happens to be. It's much more subtle than than ridiculous adult stuff about mm. choking and millions Which of genders. You, you know, just, what are you I, talking about? I don't, and I don't believe it. I don't believe it for a second and that's what's going on. No. But there we go. Okay, very interesting. Let's now have a little break and then we can come back in the second half and talk about the gender stuff because that has very much been uh, a hot topic as well. Welcome back to The Real Sex Education. We are doing a little special on the new guidance for sex education in England, very specifically England, and um, we'll talk about that a bit more in a bit. Scotland and Wales and I think Northern Ireland, they will do their own sex education. But that's a very interesting thing to note. Just park that in your head uh, for when we talk about some of this stuff in a minute. But here we go. So essentially they're saying, do not teach about gender identity. The guidance states that pupils should be taught the law about gender reassignment and be clear that individuals must be 18 before they can legally reassign their gender. Schools should not teach about the broader concept of gender identity, which the Department of Education said was a highly contested and complex subject. Interesting, because teaching religious studies is fine. But, you know, <laughs> um, that's all good. The guidance described gender identity as a sense a person may have their own gender, whether male or female, or a number of other categories. Mm. This may or may not be the same as their biological sex. Many people do not consider that they or others have a separate gender identity. Which worries me because the, the sort of the, that makes me think that then if a kid asks about it, asks a teacher about it, the teacher then is to reassert the idea that this is a contested issue and essentially we're not to speak about it. Well, you know, the way I, mean, I, I guess probably at the moment what they're probably saying, I mean, I don't know, but what they're probably saying is some people think, some people feel like this about their gender. Some people think this which also suggests that it's not everyone. Isn't that enough? Do you have to actually challenge it? Because if somebody says, I'm a boy, and they look like a girl to the teacher, does it matter? Mm, you know, mm. do, wh do, Why does it matter? Because an awful lot of children will say, this is how I feel. You know, they might say, oh, I'm Robin Hood. Yeah. You know, they, they might say all kinds of things. And it may be that their Robin Hoodness grows and they grow up to be incredibly philanthropic. You know, th that may <laughs> yeah. happen. Yeah. But on the other hand, it may not. It may be mm -hmm. that it passes. But if, if you make a big deal of it or don't tell them, they're going to feel that there's something shameful about being Robin Hoodish. Yes. And, and, and that's not what we want. No, no. And to extrapolate that, that metaphor, let's say I've gone into school and I'm wearing a dress and I, and I mm. love this dress and I want to wear it. You know, I'm presenting now in a feminine way. And instead of, instead of having that be something that's fine, that's normal, that's accepted, and that's just part of who I am, that's something that might be shunned, I'm reminded I'm a boy, it might be something that's discouraged, I think is really sad. Mm. And the idea that other children, <laughs> instead of being taught how to accept me, even though you know we're living in this world at the moment that might not, they're probably taught to be like, well, it's a contested issue and we probably shouldn't talk about it anymore. Remember, I mean, there's a Tory MP on Good Morning Britain the other day when I was doing my, I'll link to it in the in the bio of this episode, when I was doing my research, she said, you know, for goodness sake, kids are boys or girls until the age of nine. You know, they shouldn't be taught anything different. You know, I, 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 mean, I remember somebody saying, she told her mum, oh, I'm going to be a boy when I go to nursery. People say you can be whatever you like. Yeah, yeah. But you can't, can you? Because at school they'll say, no, that's contested. You can't be. But mm. I mean, if, if you take the characteristics that are supposed to be male or female, they're all socially constructed anyway. Yes. I mean, maybe men are a bit stronger than women, but the differences are there and we have to acknowledge them. But uh, some of them are not, are not the differences that we would think they were. We, we just mm. bring people up to believe that they are one thing or the other. 
So little boys are often not given much help to understand their feelings or to express Mm. their feelings. And they're expected to be brave if they fall over and hurt themselves and things like that. Girls are given much more help because they're sensitive Mm. and different. Mm. That puts all the onus on girls to manage emotions for themselves and their partners when they get Mm. older and often for their whole family. So boys die younger. They have worse mental health. They're not good at expressing their emotions. And we do that. We do that actively by socialising them to be male. Yeah. And that's, we could do with getting rid of that and have more boys in dresses playing with pushchairs and things and playing games where they're nurturing. Because lots of girls love running around with swords and whatnot. And and, and playing football. That's and a playing big thing. Football. For Absolutely. example, at the moment, Ooh. you know, that's but, a, you know that's so hot at the moment. Football was originally a girl's game. Well, yeah. I mean, it was originally a girl's game. It was taken away from them. Yeah, exactly. Because, because loads of men, I believe, had invested in the guys' game and the women's game are doing really well. And they were like, well, we're, we're not having that. that. That really does need to stop because we've invested in the men's game. So let's stop that now. Mm. Anyway, you look into the into that. But you're absolutely right. I mean, this is a perfect time. Let's just, let's just remind ourselves because there's going to be people listening who are like, what is gender identity? I know that I'm a man or I know that I'm a woman and that's really it. But th- th- there's sort of mm. different facets of this. Actually, just before, <laughs> I know I'm jumping around now, but I, I really want to get to this as part of it because essentially they, the, the guidance is teach the facts about biological sex. They say, if asked about the topic of gender identity, schools should teach the facts about biological sex and not use any materials that present contested views as fact, including the view that gender is a spectrum. Materials suggesting that someone's gender is determined by their interests or clothing choices should not be used as it risks leading pupils who do not comply with sex stereotypes to question their gender when they may not have done so otherwise. Where schools decide to use external resources, they should avoid materials that use cartoons or diagrams that oversimplify this complex concept or that could be interpreted as aimed at younger children which is essentially they're 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 calling out the gender bread man there which i find very (laughs) very rude if you guys haven't seen this it's an amazing it's a great tool for for people of all ages but it's a gender bread man and I might try and get a picture of it now, but essentially it does a good job of talking about, you you could expand it or retract it as much as you want, but it talks about who you're attracted to, to, who who you romantically, et cetera, et cetera. But you can scale that up or down as much as you want. So for gender identity, it's great. It talks about your gender identity. Okay, how do you identify? Do you identify as a man or a woman? Gender expression. How do you present to other people? You know, do you present as masculine? Do you present as feminine? That can be in clothing or in, you know, the what you do to style yourself or how you just Mm. come across and then your anatomical or biological sex what biological sex are you are you male or female what are we working with downstairs this is useful to help doctors and stuff those three answers can all be different and you know Mm. one one of the things they do to kids at school is they say okay i'm going to tell you a job i'm going to say doctor draw a picture for me of a doctor now draw a picture of a nurse now draw a picture of a teacher now draw a picture of a firefighter of a lawyer. And what's really interesting is at the end, you show everyone their, their drawings on the board and you go, okay, how many of these are men and how many of these are women? And why do you think we've put these as men? And why do you think we've put these as women? And th- the answers that kids come out with, you know, this is the socialization of mm. gender. This is gender is a complete construct that we have just made up. And th- this is what really upsets me, right? Is let's say kids then, like like I did at school, or I did when I saw the gender bread man, started to think about my gender and started to think about mm. how I can show different things every day. Mm. What happened? I am still a man. I am still present as a man. I still am happy with my manhood. But I do believe it's a spectrum, and I do believe I show many more feminine qualities than many of my friends. But... That's what's happened. What 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 are people worried about? What are they worried that is going to happen to kids if kids learn this? What are they worried about? I don't know because actually you're not a bad example. I'm sorry to use you as an example, but you, may. you are you are quite a blokey bloke actually. Right, right, you're into right. <laughs> you're into Go football on. and beer and stuff like that. <laughs> I mean if you look at stereotypes of blokey yeah. blokes yeah. you and you have a lot of male friends and you yeah. you know and you <laughs> and you behave like boys and you go whoa and stuff like yeah. that and There's it's a bit of that yeah <laughs> it's yeah. all <laughs> it's all very blokey and it makes me laugh and yeah. and I and I take pleasure in you having you know enjoying all of that that's yeah. wonderful but you are also quite a sensitive chap 
And you're very comfortable talking to women as well as men. And you are very comfortable talking about feelings and um, asking for advice and that kind of thing. And when you were little, you did play with dolls and um, you, it hasn't made you any better housework, I have to say. <laughs> That's so true. <laughs> <laughs> but even though you had a toy vacuum cleaner. Mm. Um, yeah, I did. Yeah. yeah Imagine oh, that. What a waste of time. Just give, me a, just give me an actual vacuum cleaner and I'll get some cleaning done. I do these days. And, <laughs> yeah, and then, great. you know, you, you, you did, in fact, wear dresses sometimes. You, you liked your yeah. sister's dresses. Like um, your favourite was the um, Snow White dress, wasn't yeah. it? You liked yeah. wearing that. And I wore their hand-me-downs all the time. <laughs> you know, and it was true. I was you, never went, that, you, you never actually went to school in a dress because there was a uniform. But yeah, you did. Yeah, yeah. When, when, when you had to take in pictures of yourself as a baby or a small child yeah. and people would guess who they were, we took in you in Snow White dress to confound people. But wow. lots of people got it, didn't they? <laughs> yeah, because I, I was quite a distinctive, chubby little kid. And I think well, we no, no, no. They, they said that that's the child that would dress in a Snow White dress. That's oh, how right, yeah. Knew. Well, who that's exactly that? it. And that's yeah. what we're saying. Like, that was that was me. That is me. And that's who I am. I mean, it's on a spectrum, but you're pretty straight, pretty cis, pretty, yeah. you know. But if you weren't, so what? But, but the yeah. thing is, you are you, is yes, the point. exactly. Being able to play with a hoover and wear a dress did not affect what you were going to be, I don't mm, think. Mm. Yeah, and because uh, cause that's the thing. I think I think some people, I mean, parents and maybe these these policymakers are thinking, well, what if they do change gender? What 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 happens then? And is that really sad? And it's funny because, you know, the unfortunate reality is by everyone freaking out about it, and 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 othering mm. trans people like this. That's perpetuating the problem you're scared of. Exactly. I mean, for, for, for example, you know, I, I understand that. that, that, that you know, some people will look at, at trans people and stuff and go, many are depressed, many are disenfranchised. There's a recent study in the UK, 84% of trans people thought about suicide. Mm. Half of those attempted it. Mm. The idea that you could be a kid going through this and try and want to talk to a teacher about it and they would shut it down. Mm. And, and the idea that it would be, you know, just for some sort of clout. I was listening to LBC. People outside the UK won't know what that is. That is London's biggest conversation. It's something you'll hear when you come to London, you get in a cab, right? It's very... It's why um, do cab drivers always listen to it? That is they, funny, actually, isn't they it? They love it. They love it. And... Um, they no, have, very... but you can listen to it in the rest of the country. As yes, well. yes, yeah. but I'm just saying it's the type of thing that cab drivers listen to incessantly, yeah. and uh, it was really interesting. This, this was a few years ago now, but they're having a really interesting talk about trans issues, and particularly young people that have transitioned, and they were talking to their parents. And I think sometimes people go, "Oh, it's just the hot vogue new thing," and kids will do this, you know, just just for the yeah. hell of it. Well, they had one person on who was like proper blokey right and like you know east ender and he was talking about how you know his daughter was transitioning and she before the age of 18 went through years of torment mm. and years of this disenfranchisement and years of feeling depressed and this body dysmorphia you know not mm -hmm. feeling okay in her body and he was just saying he was like, i had to explain to my friends down the pub and i had to explain you know at first i didn't understand it but the more i got used to it the more i was like right who would put themselves through this She's yes. not doing this for attention. Yes, She's not, not doing fun, this for, for likes. This is horrible. She feels, she doesn't feel like herself. Um, and this is the one that kills me, is that there was someone who called oh, in. I know. Oh, there was someone that called in and he was saying about his little girl. And uh, basically she, at the time, she was a, a young boy. And... He was so scared of her. Tra like, she, she always wanted to wear dresses. She always wanted to play with dolls. And they would constantly discourage it. And one day, she was really upset and she really wanted to wear this dress and play with her friends. And he said, sorry. And he finally let her do it. And he looked out the window. And he said, that's the first time I saw my kid. It's the first time I saw my child. <laughs> and that's it that's what we're dealing with here um <laughs> sorry 
Well, I know what you mean. I think I think that this this changing rules at the expense of people's lives when you don't actually know what you're doing is absolutely shameful because yeah. people are people and they ha- it's not trans issues are not new they've always been there yeah. but they've been buried there's been no way for people to express themselves yeah. at all if you ask yeah. children how you know that child is a boy they'll say something like he's got short hair he wears trousers i mean all the things that are that are markers they don't say oh he's got a willy no you know, they no. don't think that at all yeah, or yeah. a penis if they're Anatomical yeah, 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 yeah. They're not thinking anything like that. They're just saying what they know boys do. You know, yeah. we have to make more effort with people. Absolutely. And it just, but it just comes down to that thing of, you know, think of the, the two examples I gave. And let's say their parents weren't understanding or the people around them weren't understanding. And they went to a teacher and said this stuff. And under this mm. guidance, they would be shut down, it sounds like. And they would be referred to the fact that, oh, well, it's a contentious issue. What, what's really upsetting is it's all this stuff done to protect your children, but actually, at the end of the day, you just want to make them happy. You know, mm. If they're saying to you, I want to wear a dress, or if they're saying to you, I, don't, I want to be called this, or I want to play with this, or I want to do that, talk to them about this sort of stuff. Talk to them about why they might feel this way, and just let them decide. You shouldn't decide for them. The, the, the beauty and the joy, I believe, of having a kid is meeting them and learning who they are and yeah. and hopefully you know you guys like get on and you're going to help your chances of that a lot more if you help them develop into the person they want to be they're not going to be a little you one of the really important things here is that just because you wear a dress or or play with dolls it doesn't it doesn't mean you're trans no 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 <laughs> no no, make no, that no assumption so telling people not to carry out a, a behavior because it will do something to you it's madness but if you do believe that you are trans and you tell somebody and they say that's contentious it is effectively a form of conversion therapy because mm. you're kind of saying well you're wrong yeah and yeah. and think about this differently that's what mm. the teachers are being urged to do and you know therapy actual therapists in this country are signed up to a memorandum of understanding not to provide any kind of conversion therapy. And that means any kind of conversion therapy. Yeah. So we wouldn't encourage people to change their identity in any way at all. We don't yeah. do that. Yeah. So um, the, the, yeah, their, their sexual orientation, you, someone could come to you and say, I don't want to be gay anymore. And you're like, well, we can't, that's not a therapeutic thing to deal with. You well, could, But also sometimes you get people coming and saying, I don't want to have sex, but I want to try to have sex because it will please my partner. That's a that's a really difficult one. Yeah. Because yeah. effectively you're saying convert me. Yeah, from you asexual know, to to sexual. Yeah. And yeah. actually you can explore it and you can look at all sorts of different ways. But quite honestly, I'm not prepared to make somebody change no, if they no. don't want to. Mm-mm, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Although they're, they're saying they want to, but it falls Well, they're their saying partner, they but... want to, but it's not for themselves. Yeah, yeah. You know, you, you have to say, are you doing this? And I mean, some people, they are doing it for them. They really, they really miss having no libido or whatever it is, mm. and they want it back. That's a completely different matter. But when yeah. you've got someone who says, I have no interest in sex, I don't want to have sex, I don't enjoy sex, make gives me the ick, but I'll do it for my partner. Well, yeah, no. maybe we've got to work that out. Maybe there's other things you can do. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, maybe the government should think about that for a moment and about how people negotiate that sort of thing if it happens mm. to them. Because it sure as hell will at some point in your life because people's sexual desire switches on and off. Mm-hmm. You know, you could do a lot better teaching people how to cope with discrepancies of desire when they're in a relationship and getting older and yeah. how to cope with differences about desire you know, from the moment they start dating or yeah, yeah. You know, having relationships. It's yeah, exactly. really important, even as even friendships when you're little. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Mm. Well, speaking of the government, let's have a look at what they said again. So we're back to Education Secretary mm. Gillian Keegan last week referred to pupils being taught that gender is a spectrum or fluid and the idea that you can have different genders on different days or there's 72 of them these references to 72 genders is understand to relate to a news story that emerged last year about school on the isle of man where it's alleged that children were That's taught ironic. sex ed <laughs> yeah well yeah where, where it was alleged that children were taught sex ed by a drag queen not only have these reports been proved as false but the isle of man is not in england 
where Gillian no. Keaton's new guidance no, <laughs> does not, not and will not apply. <laughs> no. <laughs> exactly. So despite this, though, she repeated the claims about age inappropriate sex education and the 72 genders thing on GB News and in an article for the Sun newspaper. This is what I mean about the unfounded nature of some of this. Oh, and it's, it's nonsense, isn't it? Talking about uh, Good Morning Britain again, they also got lots of messages in. They were talking about this the other morning and they got four messages in, three of them from teachers, all of whom who said the guidance before was fine. We don't talk to children about this sort of thing. And none of them knew about this 72 genders thing. Mm. However, one person got in contact and said, my child was given this sheet with 72 genders on it and they had to tick a box as to which one they applied to them. And the Tory MP that was on was clinging to this <laughs> like nobody's business. Well, firstly, listen, they were very careful on the show to not question this viewer that had messaged in. I want to question the veracity. I want to see that sheet. I don't, mm. I, for me, I don't believe it. And also, giving children a sheet and saying, which gender do you identify with to tick isn't the same as teaching them it. That almost seems to me like a welcome to school, here's your induction. It seems like a really nice thing to be like, here's an option. All the kids, almost certainly all of them are going to go male or female. But just in case there's a kid who doesn't do that, well, brilliant, you've got them on board. I, but even then, I don't think this stuff is happening. This is hysteria, it's crazy, and it's dangerous. And it reminds people of Section 28, which I just, you know, we, we've talked about oh, this before on the show, but please, just, just for people that don't know what that is, Tell us what Section 28 was. Section 28 oh, was a horrible rule that teachers weren't allowed to talk to children about anything except for traditional nuclear families. And they couldn't mention being gay. They couldn't talk about being gay. They couldn't answer questions about being gay or any kind of difference. So if you were unlucky enough or lucky enough in different eyes to have parents of the same sex, then you would go to school and, you know, your parents would be clearly seen as not acceptable. Mm. And and people to this day still feel the effects of Section 28. Yeah, well, look at look at Paul Sinha, who we spoke to, who, who yeah. was, as a teenager had absolutely no one to talk to about his mm. sexuality, nowhere to go, no one to talk to, couldn't meet people, mm. nothing, because it was all closed down when he was at school. And it feels like something similar now. Mm. For me, though, with this, it is the case of, I heard previously about, you know, young girls, for example, where they, and we're talking about sex and bodies and stuff, wasn't too known in their family. And they, they their periods came. And when mm. their period came, they got scared. They didn't feel like they could talk to their family. They thought they were dying. There's reports mm. of people killing themselves, for example. Mm. Awful. Terrible. Mm. Imagine if you have any thoughts about gender or anything like that. You can't talk to your family. You're scared. You have body dysmorphia. You feel awful. And you don't feel like you can talk to a teacher about it either. You don't mm. learn anything about it. What happens to those people? What happens to those kids? I mean, I said the stat before about trans people. And the 84% mm. that thought about suicide. Mm. I mean, it sounds extreme, but there was a really good comment on and I'm link I'll link to all this stuff in the bio of this episode this, I think it was a file on four thing from uh, on BBC radio and basically someone on there said listen I'm a teacher if I tell a student the wrong date of the battle of hastings it might cost them a point in a pub quiz or it mm. might you know or what or you know they they might not do as well in their exam however if I fuck up sex education for a kid mm. that's really bad that that could have a lot worse, even just down to the sense of like t teaching about communication and teaching mm. about healthy relationships. That can have a real effect on the rest of their lives. Absolutely. It, it could mean they end up being sexually abused because they don't recognise sexual abuse. It yep. could mean they end up killing themselves because there's no one to talk to about their trans identity. It could just ruin their sex lives. I mean, seriously, the reason that I am employed is because people have trauma about sex. M mainly yeah, yeah, i mean yeah. almost all the trauma i i see is around sex because mm. people who who woke up and found blood in their knickers and thought they were dying thought they had cancer and kept it a secret for mm. years and years mm. they have trauma to this day yeah. and 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 the pe people who have no one to talk to about their identity who don't feel the way they're told they should feel you know it, it it's just like saying you're not you you don't exist yeah yeah it's awful. I mean, it, it just doesn't bear thinking about. It's I know. terrible. Well, let's end on this because I think this is a good thing. You know, has any good come from this guidance? And I think this is good because 
there's lots being talked about this. They, they talk about the, you know, no teaching sex ed under nines. They talk about the gender identity stuff. But this, I think, was already the case, but there seems to be more of a concerted effort with this now to share materials with parents. Parents should be able to see all materials used to teach in RSHE. But they can. Well, they this do. Is it. They but, could already could. Exactly. But this is this is like I say, it's shone a new light on that. This this new guidance, I think, has, has reminded people of that. And again, I mentioned that file on four documentary. You mm. can listen to some parents going into a school to be taught exactly slide by slide mm. what their kids are going to be taught. And the parents beforehand, like, I was really worried, and I've come mm. out now, and I feel a lot better. And you know what's funny is I bet a load of those parents that are terrified. It's because they weren't taught this stuff either, and they imagine all this stuff that's mm. going to be taught and they imagine the choking and they imagine this that and the other and so they go along and they go oh okay none of that was in there i actually do feel good about my kid being taught this stuff you agree with all the slides great actually i wish i had this when i was a kid mm. that's what's funny it, the ironic thing is is the parents are only so scared about this because they didn't have the sex education themselves mm. i think this thing was there before but this being sort of underlined is really positive and the good thing about, you know, good sex education comes when it's teachers and parents working in tandem. And hopefully we have we have more of that going down the line. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you don't look to. <laughs> you Why? don't look to. We will see. Listen, I just wanted to leave people with that because I do think that's a really positive thing. Uh, and like I say, I'll link to the File and Four documentary. Really interesting. And everything else in the, in the show notes. I'm uh, sorry I cried. Um, <laughs> at one point made my nose go all puffy coming out in sympathy with you <laughs> exactly but listen guys get in touch let us know what you think um, yeah thank you so much for listening apologies uh, mum hopefully will be sounding back to her best in terms of audio quality next time but mum thank you so much for your eloquence and, and, your, and your expertise as per usual thank you Oh, wonderful again guys thank you so much for listening subscribe follow us everywhere and we will see you next time for some more real sex education bye bye <laughs>